Start off with olive oil. You just want enough in there. Give a decent coating to the bottom of the pot. Now, I trimmed up the chuck so it's nice and square, two inches thick. That way, every piece is of a uniform size, and so therefore it will cook uniformly. No piece will be overdone or underdone or critical when cooking proteins. Make sure that they are the same size, the same thickness, the same width, so they cook at the same rate. In this case, I'm separating it right at the joints of the muscles, but that's okay. Now I had some bacon drippings left over from cooking breakfast and I warmed them up a little bit so they're viscous. I could add that into the pot and that's just instant flavor. Instantly adding flavor just like that. I don't add beef bacon to my beef stew but I don't mind adding the bacon drippings. Alright, two pounds of chuck to get it uh, where we want it. So first thing, copious amounts of kosher salt. Save that there. We're going to season it with some with some thyme. That'll sit there. We're going to put in some garlic powder. That'll sit there. We're going to add some black pepper. Mmm, nice fresh oregano. Time. We got in there some parsley and the only thing I'm forgetting here, and I don't seem to have any, is some basil. Now, normally I would put basil in there, but apparently not today. No, we're going to want to stir all that. Get that all. Coated. Can't believe I'm going to do this without basil. Basil. Basil as it was. Okay. So we got the basics going. Alright. Now we need some floor. Guys, my back is killing me. Just exercised a little bit ago. Get a little too much, I think. Considering how little I've done. Well, for a long time now, I gotta get back into shape slowly. And I overdid it a little bit today. Hey, right. ow. Right. Well, we turn the seasoned meat to get it good and incorporated in all the flour. All right. Where's our heat? Our heat? Oh, I turned the heat off. Heat's back on. Heat's about not perfectly up on high, but pretty close. Let that start getting hot. And we'll start adding the meat. do this in two batches so we'll start with that.
you know, this big a pot, I can, I can have all this at once. I don't need to do two batches. This pot's big enough to take it all. There we go. the next step. Need one stock. Now that can go there. Get a knife. Yippee. And we'll move the bad parts. Oh. Ah, Tried to jump off ship. Tried to jump ship. Look at that. Now this we want to dice up real fine. This stuff here is actually going to cook away to just about nothing. Good browning in there. Got a ways to go yet. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the onion. First, take the top off. with it too. Another side piece. Do that later. Peel this half. chop. So by doing it this way, you never get onion juice in your eyes. Never, ever, ever.
There we go. That's the onion. Two onions, so I gotta be kind of strong with that. Alright. Now I'm gonna go ahead and dice up some carrot. Typically don't use these little carrots, but that's what I got. Second half of this, this will be easy using these carrots, but for this part, kind of small. So now we're going to start spooning this out and setting it aside. Now the next step here, there we go, alright, the next step here is to get all that yummy stuff up, unstuck, up off the bottom. So I've got carrots, onion, and uh, celery in here, what I think of as the Holy Trinity, although some people think something else is the Holy Trinity, but, and now I like to use a flat, I like to use a flat bottom deal to stir those around and what those are going to do they're going to release their juices and you see there you go see how quickly that's happening all that flavor is coming up off the bottom of the pan and that's what we want a little bit of muscle All right, here we go. Got all that up. No, not all of it. All right, we gotta let that cook a little bit. Scrape that off down into there. There we go. Oh, that smells lovely already. Already that's smelling pretty good. All right. Now I'm going to continue with the flavoring. I'm going to add some more garlic. Add some more pepper. Add some more thyme. This is ground thyme. Some more salt. Oh. Parsley and oregano. And Basil, if I had basil, I'd be adding an equal amount of basil to that as well. Oh, there we go. Whoosh, now I can smell it. 
And you notice that almost all of that olive oil we put in there is gone. And the bacon drippings. See that? All right. Now to further deglaze this, I'm going to add a little bit more flavor. Let me... Fine again. That's a big 16 ounce Heineken. Now we're going to give that bottom one more really good scraping. Make sure we got all that flavor up. All right, now. Add all the meat back in. Now we've got the, the pan deglazed. Stir all that around. Oh, that smells so good. Now we want to add enough water to this to uh, make sure the meat is covered. There we go. Ah. Clean up the little bits that spilt. There we go. So this has been humming along here now for about 15, 20 minutes on a simmer. That looks beautiful. Now I'm going to add my hard stock vegetables. So what are my hard stock vegetables? I have uh, turnips and I have parsnip. So that's one parsnip and one turnip. I'm also going to add my carrots, about, about that many. <coughs> I'm going to cover this and let this go for about another 15 minutes or so. Then I'm going to add my potatoes. And then the last thing I'm going to add, well, I add the, the potatoes and the onions, and then the last thing I'm going to add is going to be my uh, celery again. You know what? I want to hit this up with some more, with some more love. So let's let's do a little more parsley. We want to turn this up now. I want to get this up to a rolling boil. Anytime you add something new to the pot. You want to get a rolling boil going. That way it's safe, you know? Oh. That way there can't be anything that you've added in there that's going to be bad for you. And if it is, you're cooking it down enough to make sure it's okay. All right. And some black pepper. And copious amount of kosher salt, got all that in there, give that a stir, and anytime you cut up fresh vegetables, 
I like to bring it back up to a boil make sure that there's no little you know buggies and microbes and whatever in your food to me it's just a safe practice so let's go ahead and put the lid on and we'll let that get good and hot and now this is boiled for a while we've got all of the really stiff vegetables in there now we're going to go ahead and add the next level of vegetables into this here I've got carrots and onions I'm sorry <laughs> I've got potatoes and onions, excuse me. The potatoes and onions are not as hard as everything else. So we give this a good stir. <clears throat> and we let this come back up to a good boil again. And we're getting down, almost there. All right, well, we're down to the wire now. This is the final final stages making my stew got up to a good boil again all the potatoes <coughs> and onions are in there and the carrots and everything <coughs> I can feel by the impact that I have with the vegetables that they need a while to go yet I can feel the stiffness in them so I'm not ready to add the celery yet we're gonna let this cook Oh, another five ten minutes. Okay, fogged it right up. <laughs> All right, that's what I wanted to feel. Go down, scrape the bottom. Oh, I can feel the carrots and stuff are softened up. Time to add the celery. There we go. And that's going to be it. That's all we're going to add to that. We're going to let this cook for a little bit. About uh, 10 more minutes. And we're done. See, it's still going to boil. Turn the heat down, because that's still going to boil up. Turn the heat down to a 2. Give that two more minutes and then we'll serve. All right, kids. That's the stew. It's all done. Whew. Steaming up the lens, aren't I? Look how bright and colorful that is. All right. Now, when I do the stew, I like to use a deep dish. In this case I'm going to use a pie plate. And I use a big old scoop. So I get a little bit of everything. One problem with a pie plate though is they conduct the heat very well. There you go. There's dinner. That's turned off. That's leftovers, and off we go. Let's give it a try, shall we? First, I'm going to fork the potatoes, carrots. Yep, okay, everything's cooked all the way through. Ooh, it's hot. I'm going to have to let this cool a little bit. I'm going to have to let it cool a little bit. Let me find a, see if I can find a little piece of meat. There we go, a little piece of meat. Mmm, hot. Mmm. Oh, that's so good. That is just so, so good. Little piece of carrot. Oh, they're too hot. Can I let this cool down a little bit? Tell you what, this beef stew is just wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Mmm. I probably should have cut the meat in the smaller pieces. Mm. 
character perfect. <clears throat> That's a piece of turnip. Yep. Yep, turn up. Turn up, turn up. Hmm, I don't see any of the parsnip in here. I know I had a whole parsnip in here. Oh, that's it. That's parsnip. Hmm. Parsnip has such a wonderful sort of earthy earthy flavor to it one of the tricks to this is making sure you cut all your vegetables exactly the same size same thickness so like you'll notice I cut the parsnips and actually that's a piece of no two pieces of turnip I cut them about the same size as the carrots and I cut the potatoes about the same size as the carrots I let the carrots be my guidance for size mmm just so good so so good now potatoes I cut them the same thickness as everything else but of course you know because of their shape they're larger but they still cook through the same amount of time mm. literally don't have to do anything but press it up against the roof of my mouth and it just dissolves it's perfect Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Dip it into a little bit of the gravy. <clears throat> As it's cooling, the the gravy part thickening up by itself. This is my mother's recipe. She's the one who taught me how to make a beef stew. I've been trying to teach other members of my family about it. My daughter-in-law, I showed my daughter-in-law once. I think we're gonna to need to do it a couple of three times before she'll have it down. Mm -hmm. The chuck is so tender this way. It really is. Even a great big old piece like that. flavors are just amazing. There's one batch that I made. Three, probably four meals out of that. Maybe more. Time will tell. <clears throat> I'll move it to a smaller pot after it cools down a bit to store the fridge. 
and then all I have to do is just scoop some out, put it back in, <coughs> put it back in the tray or the plate, throw it in the microwave for a little bit. Beer, since there was beer in the stew, the beer goes perfectly with the stew. Now, if you don't like beer, you could use like red wine if you want to, and add a little of that, a little Merlot or something. I'm an advocate that you should. I'm an advocate that you should always use wine. If, if it's not good enough for you to drink it, then you shouldn't use it in your cooking. That's the way I look at it. So, hmm. Some people would go out and buy cheap beer, cheap wine for cooking. Never do that. Don't ever do that. Hmm. But by the same token, I wouldn't use a hundred dollar bottle of wine for cooking either. Oh. Hmm. I don't know, maybe I will. Certainly not all of it. Those potatoes are delightful. Mm, so tender. The chuck, the two pound chuck roast that we use just melts in your mouth just like butter. The turnip and the parsnip add just a certain flavor profile. I mean, you could do without them. You could just make it, you know, potatoes and carrots. But when I was a kid, I preferred it that way. But now that I'm older, I really like the taste of the parsnip and the turnip in there. Especially the parsnips. And the celery. And these little, these little carrots are perfect for this. Hmm. I'm wearing a lot of. Well, kids, I hope you enjoyed watching me make a beef stew, a family recipe, and, and eat it. Um, if you would, please do like, subscribe, and share my videos. We'll have more for you here in the near future. Thanks, kids. Have a good day. Oh, be good. Be careful. Take good care of one another. We'll have more for you tomorrow. Bye.